the most powerful, the most modern, the most expensive. This word describes the F-22 Raptor. But they were built almost five times less than planet. Not so long ago, there were even reports that the United States wanted to decommission the F-22 to save the budget. In this video, we will take a look at the history, technical characteristics, weapon and relevance of the F-22 in today's environment. Make yourself a cup of coffee and sit back, it's going to be interesting. But first, please subscribe on my channel and like this video, it's very important for me. Let's move on to how this airplane was created. To do this, let's back to 1977 and 1978. Back then, three state of the art Soviet aircraft made their first flight. The MiG-29, which became the main competitor of the F-16. The Su-27, which became a threat of the F-15. And the A-50 reconnaissance aircraft, which could serve as size for 10 fighters at once and detect American aircraft at the distance of 300 km. How to defend such a powerful enemy? It's a good question. In 1981, the US Air Force determined that the advanced tactical fighter was needed to solve this problem. The emphasis was on three main aspects. Stealth technology, that is, a reduction of radar autonomous signatures. Radar, it must be many times more powerful than those installed on Soviet vehicles. A long-range weapon to destroy enemy aircraft outside of their range. US Navy also were interested in this project, as they were looking for a replacement of their F-14 Tomcat. The advanced tactical fighter was supposed to be a pure fighter, meaning that it was not supposed to have a strike capabilities. Five companies took part in the tender, but since the task was not easy, they were divided into two groups. The first one was Lockheed Martin, Boeing and General Dynamics, and the second one was Northrop Grumman and McDonnell Douglas. On October 31, 1986, contacts were signed with the boss group that provided the production of two prototypes. They differed in the engines, which tender is also announced. Pratt & Whitney presented the F-119 jet engine, and the General Electric presented the F-120. In the end, the Lockheed Martin aircraft was designated the YF-22A, and the Northrop Grumman aircraft was designated the YF-23A. What is the difference between the prototypes? Let's start with the YF-22A. It was built according to the classical scheme, which is similar to the fourth generation fighters. But the inclined vertical stabilizers and the increased number of elements formed by flat trapezoidal and triangular panels reduced its radar visibility. And to reduce the thermal visibility, noses of the engines were replaced. Instead of the usual round ones, they installed flat ones with notches. This was to help cool the air in advance. The YF-23A was more radical airplane. Its horizontal and ventricle plumage was replaced by a solid rotary inclined plane. This made the fighter even less conspicuous than its competitor. But then, why did the YF-22A win? It doesn't seem logical. The United States want to create a flagship aircraft to wipe the nose to the Soviet Union. Why choose the more conservative option? The fact is that it's difficult to create an aircraft that both stealthy and maneuverable. The best proof of my words is the F-117, a stealthy US bomber. On radar, it can be easily confused with the large birds, the effective scattering area is the same. But it's impossible to break the sound barrier with this aircraft. And even maneuvering is not easy. A similar situation occurred with the YF-23A. Its coefficient of visibility somewhere between that of a flock of birds. But the maximum permissible overload is limited to 6G. This is a laudable level of a fighter jet. With such characteristics, you can forget about close combat. Yes, according to the concept of war, American fighters should fight 40-50 km from the enemy and rely on their stealth. But if a Soviet aircraft somehow finds itself 5 or 10 km away from the YF-23A, the American would hardly be able to win. The YF-22A doesn't have this disadvantage. It can easily withstand the forces of 9G, so it can complete close combat with the first generation fighter on equal terms. In addition, it was better suited for the US Navy. Therefore, on 23rd April 1990s, a group of Lockheed Boeing and General Dynamics companies was announced as the winner of the competition for the ATF. As for the engines, the Pratt & Whitney F-119 went into production. The first pre-production aircraft flew on 7 September 1994. Compared to the prototype, the F-22 was equipped with a vertically controlled thrust vector. The airframe was also partially modified. Serial production began in 1997. However, at the last moment, the Navy backtracked and refused the novel version of F-22 instead, ordering the F-A-18 Super Hornet. The Air Force's order has also been significantly reduced. Initially, they wanted 750 aircraft. Then they reduced the order to 382 aircraft. 
but the factory troops received only 187 production fighters, of which 165 remain. Now let's take a closer look at the characteristics of the F-22A Raptor. The length is almost 19 meters. The wingspan is 13 and a half. The height is just over 5 meters. The crew consists of one person. The aircraft weighs almost 20 tons and have a maximum takeoff weight of 38. The F-22A Raptor is powered by two Pratt & Whitney F-119 PV-100 turbofan engines. Their thrust is 12,000 kg in normal mode and 16,000 kg in afterburner mode. The total is 24 and 32,000 kg respectively. For comparison, the F-35 has only one engine and it produces only 13,000 kg. Such a powerful power plant of the F-22A Raptor allows it to reach a maximum speed of 2,414 km per hour. As for cruising, there are two modes. The first is normal, with speeds of 850 km per hour. The other is super cruising at high altitude, 1,963 km per hour. The choice of mode directly affects the combat range, which is 850 or 185 km respectively. As I mentioned earlier, the maximum G-force is from minus 3 to plus 9 G, which is the level of the first generation aircraft. Now let's move on to the most important thing in the modern aircraft, the radar. The F-22A Raptor uses the INAPG 77 version 1, which can identify a factor class target at a range of 400 km. However, it works most stably at a distance of 300 km. Nevertheless, this is enough to wipe the nose of A-50 reconnaissance aircraft. And I won't even mention the radar of Soviet fighters. As for weapons, the ammunition for air combat looks like this. On the internal suspension are two short-range AIM-9 Sidewinder A-2 air missiles, four six-long-range AIM-120 AIM RAM missiles. You can attach four more of them or full tanks on the external suspension. But it should be borne in mind that in this case stealth capability will suffer greatly. As for air-to-ground missions, the ammunition will be different. The internal suspension carries two 400kg GDAM bombs or eight 110kg GBU-39 SDBs. Along with them are the familiar AIM-9 and AIM-120, two for each. The external suspension armament is similar. For close combat, the F-22A Raptor is equipped with the 20mm M61A2 Vulcan cannon with a 480 round ammunition capacity. Now let's take a closer look at the stealth technology. Take a closer look at the metal joints. Their edges are not straight and with notches. This allows for more efficient radio wave scattering. If we look at the F-15, all the joints are straight. The next innovation is increased number of triangular and traditional elements. The tilt of the vertical stabilizers is equally important. You won't find this solution anywhere else on fourth-generation aircraft. But the effect of this innovation will be felt only when the F-22A Raptor is covered with a stealth coating. The composition of this paint is kept sacred. This is one of the reasons why F-22s are not allowed to be exported. In addition, don't see the stealth coating is just one particular paint. There are several types. Not so long ago, the F-22A Raptor was painted with the experimental mirror paint. The F-22 Spotlight also has a stealth coating. But how to protect the aircraft if it is discovered? Firstly, it's necessary to understand why the F-22A Raptor is really on enemy's radar. The fighter jet is equipped with the NAR 56 ml detector which should warn off missile launch. If a missile hit is unavoidable, the pilot will release MGU-39-40 tabs to confuse the fired homing head. Also, no one rules out the use of aerobatics to complicate the hit. Fortunately, the F-22, unlike the YF-23, can afford it. Also, do not forget about the secure IFDL data channels. They help pilots of different aircraft communicate with each other and with the base. But if the F-22A Raptor is such a great aircraft, why the US want to retire it? To answer this question, we need to understand how this fighter is fundamentally better than F-15E Strike Eagle. First of all, it is a radar. The F-22A Raptor can detect a 4th generation fighter at a distance of up to 400 km, and the 5th generation at 40 km. In the F-15, the situation is much more sad, which maximum range is only 175 km. Accordingly, it will see 5th generation fighter about 20 km away. But that the only stealthy fighters can be Russian Su-57 or Chinese J-20. And while the latest may still pose some serious thought, the Russian project is just another emblazement of fans with a beautiful name. 
otherwise the Su-57 would have taken part in the war in Ukraine. Also, we shouldn't forget the United States is full of specialized recognized aircraft – E-2, E-3, E-7 and so on. Therefore, the radar issue is not very important. The next term part of the F-22 is stealth technology. But there is a nuance with it – its maintenance is very, very expensive. The paint needs to be changed every 5-10 years and constantly maintained. If you won't take care of it, the ordinary rain can damage it. Only top military airfields can meet such operation requirements and therefore the use of F-22 is limited. At the price of an hour of flight time is a lot – $44,000. It's like a brand new Tesla Model Y. The F-15 will cost $21,000. The F-35 – $28,000. But if we look at the situation from the price combat capability side, it's better to choose the F-16 which costs only $8,000 per hour. The F-22 Aeroptor has no more advantages. So I think the F-35 is a better option of the Air Force right now. Also, the US Navy uses the F-35B, so it is most cost-effective. And what do you think about this? Write in the comments. I'd be interested to know what you thought. If you were interested, don't forget to watch the other videos on my channel. I'm sure you will enjoy them.